All right, welcome back everybody. Today I'm going over a complete guide to mono and stereo audio tracks in DaVinci Resolve, so grab a good set of headphones or computer speakers. Unfortunately, laptop speakers and your cell phone just aren't going to cut it for this tutorial. So let's just get right into this. So as you can see, I've got three audio tracks here. They are a guitar recording from my song November Night. Pick it up at tunesquid.com if you need some free and safe royalty-free music. I've also got some DaVinci Resolve templates and effects for you. Grab it all if you need it. So this is just a guitar recording. The first one is the guitar panned hard left. The second one is the exact same guitar. I centered it and rendered it out. And the third one, again, centered, but I rendered it out as a mono source. So pretty straightforward. We can hear exactly what each of those sounds like. So to begin with, how do we make that left mono track sound stereo, basically? And that's going to be pretty easy. So if we listen back to it, we can hear it's only coming from the left side speaker. So if we want to make it come out of both, there's a couple ways that we can do this. Firstly, the easier way, right click up here and change the track type to mono. And now it's coming right down the middle. Easy as that. Another thing you could do is if we change this back to stereo, we can right click on the track itself, go into clip attributes, and here we can change what's coming out of each speaker. So if we can see on the right side here, track channel left and right, that's going to be corresponding to the output, your left and right speaker. And so the embedded channel one is your left side, embedded channel two is the right side. So in this case, if we change them both to left because that's where our guitar is, click OK. Now it sounds like it's coming right down the middle and there's audio coming from both sides. Perfect. What if we wanted to take this stereo track and make it mono? Well, it kind of actually is mono already. Basically, since the left and right speaker are playing exactly the same audio, even though it's a stereo track, for all intents and purposes, you could consider it a mono source because that's really all that a mono source is a track that's being played identically on the left and right speaker to simulate as if something was in the middle. And that's exactly what's happening here. But if we wanted to emulate it as if it was coming from only the left, we can do that through panning. And it's as simple as opening up your inspector, going to the audio tab, panning it 100% to the left. And now if we play it back, it's coming from only the left side. So that's a pretty easy one as well. Now, if we wanted to actually make it mono for some processing purposes, there are a few instances that you might wanna do this. I'll get into that in a second. So what I'm firstly gonna do is reset this to be right down the middle. And now it's exactly as it was before. And now what we can do is just right click on here, go to the uh, track type, change that to mono. And now, it's playing it back as a mono source. But I'm going to click Control Z to undo that, go back to this, the stereo source. So you may want to convert this to either a mono or a stereo, depending on the type of post-processing that you're doing. The biggest example that comes to my mind is for time-based effects such as reverb or delay. Delay especially if you're doing something with a stereo delay, it will interact differently whether you have a mono source that's going right up the middle as a single track versus two identically panned left and right tracks in stereo. So it's just going to have a different interaction basically depending on if you're using a mono or a stereo source. So try to think ahead to the result that you're after and pick the appropriate type of track for the effects that you're going to be using in the post-processing stage. So the next track that we have here is rendered out in mono. Okay. 
and we can see here in our inspector that it is a monosource because it's a single thick line versus the two double lines. And you can also see it's 1.0 for mono versus 2.0 for stereo. So what if we wanted to make this mono source sound like the original stereo one pan left? We can do that, click on it, pan it over to the left. So easy enough to do that. What if we wanted to create a stereo track out of this? Well, that's pretty easy too. All we have to do is duplicate it. So I'm gonna hit Alt on my keyboard, drag it down, and now we have two copies of it. I'm going to go to the first one titled mono, drag that all the way to the left, click on the second one, drag it all the way to the right, and now if I play it back, what you should hear is an identical copy coming through both sides. Now, the problem with this is it's not actually a stereo source. It's just coming from both sides. So really, there's not much of a purpose to do this unless you need it for some sort of post-processing or you want to make a true stereo sound. What do I mean by true stereo? Well, something that isn't going to be identical on the left and right side. Some sort of separation to give the illusion that it's wider and bigger than it actually is. Now, how do we do that? There's a couple different ways and I'll show you several different ones here. So for starters, let's take this second track, the one that is rendered out down the center, but in stereo and create a true stereo out of that using a plugin. And let's hop into Fairlight and I'll show you what I'm going to do. This is a paid effect. It's called Stereo Maker. It's by uh, Brainworks and Plugin Alliance. It's usually on sale for like 20 to 30 bucks. So just wait till it goes on sale. It's invaluable and I actually use it all the time in my music production and sometimes even in voiceovers and video work. So if I throw this open, I'm going to drop the tone down all the way. I almost never mess with that. Uh, depending on what I'm doing, I might adjust the mono frequency. Uh, in this example, I'm not going to do that just so you can get the most pure idea of what this sounds like. And now if we turn up the stereo width just a little bit, this is much more than I would normally do, but just to show off the effect, if I play this back, Now listen to what happens if I turn it on and off. Red is on and gray is off. So I'll start with it off and then I'll turn it on and off as the song goes. And you can hear there's a massive difference. So it's creating the illusion that there's stereo from a singular source. So let's say you don't have Stereo Maker and you don't want to purchase it. You just want to use something a little more standard that you might already have. We can get a very similar effect with a delay plugin. Now what I'm going to do is take our dual mono tracks, the ones that we panned hard left and hard right earlier, and I'm going to throw a delay on track number four, which is the one that's panned hard right. So I'm going to go and add our uh, plugin. I believe it was under spatial. Yep, and there it is, Relay. So not something that you would typically think of as a daily plugin because it's more used in mixing. But if you see at the bottom under the advanced section, it actually has a time delay function. And what's really nice about this one is I can delay it by 0.5 or 0.1 or even one millisecond. And I'm going to do just uh, one millisecond for right now. And what you're going to hear is, again, I'm going to flip this on and off, but you're going to hear a very distinct stereo separation between the two. So what you can hear when I flip this thing on, it takes the sound from being right up the middle and splits it hard left and hard right. Now, the reason that this works is that 
our brains interpret a signal that's identical on the left and right side as coming from perfectly in front of us. Now, if you separate that and add a very quick delay of half a millisecond, one millisecond, two milliseconds, somewhere in that ballpark, our stupid monkey brains doesn't see that as an identical source anymore. It goes, hey, these are two completely different sounding things coming from the left and the right. And it basically takes that singular thing coming from right in the middle and pans it hard left and hard right, just like it should be. But you're going to need to add a little bit of delay or something to make it sound different. EQ isn't going to cut it. It has to be a time-based effect. So either modulation, which is going to sound weird, you're going to get some phasing. You can do reverb. If you have a really quick slapback reverb, uh, delay always works if you can get it quick enough. But you're going to have to make sure that it's 100% wet and that there's no feedback. It's just that 100% delayed signal that is one millisecond. Otherwise, your brain is going to interpret that as phasing issues and not as two separate signals. So keep that in mind. Now, we could do exactly the same thing here on the stereo track in the middle. All we have to do is separate it out just like we did before. Let's say you don't even have a delay that does this. Well, there technically is one more way that you can do this, and it's something that we use in the audio world all the time at the mixing stage, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. So first, I'm going to go back into here, and I'm just going to delete that delay. And now if we go back into the edit page, I'm going to show you a crazy, mind-blowing secret of how to get huge stereo separation absolutely for free. Zoom all the way into your track, turn off the magnet, grab one of the two tracks, move it over to the right as little as you possibly can. So as you can see here, there's barely any difference there. But if I was to play this back, there's some stereo separation happening. And now I'm going to hit Control Z to undo and redo this as we're playing, but listen for the stereo separation that comes in here. So the reason I saved this one for last is because in video editing, Sometimes this trick doesn't work. Sometimes you can't get it quick enough. So if you do too much of a time separation, it starts sounding like a really quick slapback reverb or something along those lines. You can get some phasing issues. Uh, and that's basically down to the speed of the clip that you're using and the timeline's frame rate. If you just can't get it uh, separated by a small enough amount, it's not going to sound right but this is a great way to do stereo separation on the cheap. There we go. I just revealed a huge secret from the mixing world to all of you video editors out there. And this is a way to create true stereo images from mono sources. So if this video was helpful, let me know in the comment section below and let me know what you'd like to see going forward. And as always, if you wanted to download any of the safe and free royalty-free music, Follow the link below to my company ToonSquid and you can grab some free DaVinci Resolve templates and effects while you're there. And until next time, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye now.